So, warm welcome everyone to uh, ABG Sundal Collier Investor Days here at Haymarket. My name is Rikard Andekrans. I'm an equity research analyst in the healthcare sector at uh, ABG. Uh, so, I will be um, hosting today and I will be holding a short Q&A session after the presentation. So, with no further ado, I would like to welcome uh, the CEO of Enzymatica, Fredrik Lindberg, to the stage. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, welcome to this session. Um, we will talk about a common cold product called cold zyme. Cold because it's common cold and zyme because it contains an enzyme from Atlantic cod, the fish. There was a lot of information in less than 10 seconds. This is me. I'm the CEO of Enzymatica since 2015. I'm a physician and uh, I'm an associate professor in clinical pharmacology. So I'm, I'm trained for this world. I also started an orthopedic company in 2001, which is now listed on, on a small cap. Enzymatica. It's a company located in Lund, a big university town in the southern part of Sweden. Uh, the closest capital is Copenhagen. We speak half Danish and half Swedish. Uh, and the product, the first product we put on the market is uh, Colzyme. It was um, launched in Swedish pharmacies already in 2013 for prevention and shortening and treatment of common cold. In 2015, it was listed on small cap, uh, sorry, First North, and we are today 18 full-time employees. Uh, the enzyme is one of the core components. There are two core, core components, and we manufacture the enzyme uh, ourselves in a unit in Iceland uh, in a small company that we acquired a couple of years ago. Today, Coldzyme has 6.4% uh, market share on the Swedish common cold market, and uh, we are currently growing with more than 20% uh, sales value. So on the seventh year uh, on the market, we are still growing substantially. In 2017, we partnered with one of the biggest European pharmaceutical companies, and they started selling Colzheim in uh, Germany, Austria, and Belgium. I will tell you a little bit more about that. The two big uh, pharmacy chains, uh, Boots and Lloyds, are selling our product in the UK. Last year, we did a 100 million Swedish krona rights issue. And at the same time, we closed uh, a distribution agreement with one of the biggest uh, Japanese life science companies. And then it takes time to get the product uh, approved. It's C-marked in, in uh, Europe, but in other countries, you need separate approvals. This year, uh, we did a technology uh, agreement with a cosmetic company. So we are selling our technology and uh, a specific formulation containing the en enzyme. And over three years, uh, the value of that agreement is at least 12 million euro. So what is Colzyme? It's the most sold product to prevent and shorten common cold. Uh, most of the products uh, on the market in Sweden, in Scandinavia, in Europe and globally are for treatment of symptoms. So you have a stuffed nose or you're coughing or you feel bad. Then you go to the pharmacy and, and buy something to alleviate the symptoms, to bring them down. While cold time is unique because it, it attacks the virus and brings down the amount of virus in, in the throat and nose and thereby you can bring down all of the symptoms and you can shorten uh, the cold period. Um, so it acts through a barrier. I've already talked about that, but I can show you most of the virus, at least in the start, are growing in the throat. So it's not that you start with a blocked nose. It starts with a tingling feeling in the throat, a sore throat feeling. Uh, it's because the virus is growing there initially. So it's important to attack the virus by uh, spraying in the throat. Uh, and then you can see a schematic uh, picture to the right. 
virus is coming, the cold sun barrier containing of glycerol, which is a sugar alcohol and the enzyme, uh, protects the, the mucus cells, the mucus membrane from the virus. If the virus still comes down to the mucous membrane, the enzyme cuts off the surface proteins of the virus, so the virus cannot attach to our body. So it's without attachment proteins on the surface. Uh, this is a picture of all known uh, common cold viruses. And uh, it's a laboratory study made in US, uh, and it shows that cold time inactivates common cold virus. Uh, five of the known viruses up to 99.9% and one of the viruses to 65%. So it's not a 100% uh, product, but still it covers uh, most of the common cold viruses. Cold time is a medical device. It's not a pharmaceutical. It acts outside of the body. It acts in the throat, but outside of the body. Uh, and it deactivates virus. So it's, it's not a pharmaceutical. That means it goes quicker to get approval. But still, we need that in most countries. Today, um, we have a geographic focus in Europe because we have a CMARC. But we have also close deal, deals with Japan, Hong Kong, Australia. Uh, and we launched in, in South Africa this year together with a partner called ABEX. Last time I was here in September, I told you about the cosmetic deal. Uh, I also told you about the South African launch. We have also launched a new taste, the line extension uh, in Sweden and Denmark. Uh, and I also told you that we have broadened the indications. So from this year, it's not only treatment of common cold, it's also sore throat and uh, bringing down the symptoms, not only shortening the cold and protecting. Uh, since we met last time, a couple of things has happened. One is that we were conducting a big placebo-controlled clinical trial. We did one big trial last year that had very good results. Now we did an almost identical trial that failed uh, in, in the matter of we didn't reach the primary endpoint of showing improved quality of life. Um, of course, we are looking at a lot of other things, uh, and uh, uh, we are expecting to have the results um, beginning of next year and then have a report during Q2. Uh, right after that, we had a, a Q3 report showing that uh, the growth for Q3 was 47% in sales compared to last year. Uh, and we also communicated that um, we are going for a bridge financing during next year. Uh, we do not have any plans uh, for the moment to do a, uh, a rights issue. We hope that it's enough with the bridge funding, depending a little bit uh, uh, how the sales will develop. And then last week, we uh, announced that we will have a collaboration uh, regarding a mouth spray in uh, Germany with the company Stada. And then you might get confused because I told you that uh, we have a collaboration in, in Germany with this company. So one slide about that. Uh, we launched in 2017 together with Stada. And it was a very successful launch. Immediately, they covered 90% of all pharmacies. Uh, and they got a, a good uh, penetration. But we woke up competitors and we were brought in front of a court and they decided that we were not, or our partner was not allowed to market the product in Germany without having placebo-controlled clinical trials, patient studies. Uh, and that is because the German marketing laws supersede the European laws in all other countries, also in Belgium and, and uh, Austria where Stada sell our product. We are allowed to sell the product, claim about the, um, uh, the properties of the product, but not in Germany unless we have a placebo-controlled trial. Uh, now we did the placebo-controlled trial, uh, but we couldn't show that it improved uh, quality of life significantly better than placebo. So instead, uh, Stada uh, asked us to develop uh, another spray uh, it's a totally different spray. It's uh, 
registered under the cosmetic direct directive. So it's not a medical device. Uh, and it's a mouth spray. Uh, and we got the first order last week, 2.3 million. Uh, and they are going to launch this product now in January. And then, of course, we are working on uh, trying to solve the problem with the placebo-controlled trials, either because we find something that is of interest in the recently performed study or uh, possibly doing a new study. This is the world we are living in. It's very difficult to do clinical trials and asking people, how do you feel? And then they are going to trans transfer their sensation into a questionnaire. And it's a lot of questionnaires. So sometimes uh, it's very difficult to take part of these kind of studies. A uh, little bit about Q3. I told you 47% growth compared to last year. Net sales 19.5 Swedish million krona, 13.2 last year. Uh, cash flow is improving. But last year we did one big trial, the successful trial. Uh, this year we did another big trial, 700 patients. So uh, it has strained uh, our cash. Uh, we're not planning to do any big clinical trial next year. So hopefully that will improve together with uh, uh, the top line. This is the quarterly sales year by year since launch. And you can see Q1, uh, it has been growing since, since 2013. Q2 is low season, it's summer. And then the winter is uh, much better. And you have Q3 there and you have uh, trend lines. The red arrows uh, are three quarters where we were selling uh, together with Stada in 2018 and uh, Q1, 2018. Uh, no, 2017 and, and Q1, 2018. Uh, and the year after was without uh, Stada sales. But you can see that we are growing, we have been growing without uh, being possible, able to sell in Germany. Uh, this is more over a longer time. Uh, it's moving annual total. So it's every dot on the curve is recent 12 months. Uh, so it, it equals out the season variations. And then you can see the hump in 2018. That is when we started to sell in Germany. Uh, but it's, it's growing um, continuously, even if we don't sell in Germany for the moment. Mm -hmm. To the right, you can see Danish pharmacy. It's not only us that earn money on Colsheim, and it's not only the consumers that benefit from the product. Also, the pharmacies earn money uh, because uh, it's a product that sells a lot uh, and gives them uh, good margins. This is uh, official data statistics from, uh, from Swedish uh, pharmacies. And currently, we are number four uh, in sales. Otrevin, Strepsis, and, and Nipaxone are bigger. You can see um, Bis Solvon is, is smaller than us. Bafusin, Nesseril, uh, and uh, we have a um, moving annual total currently uh, of 30.7%. Uh, uh, and the market share for the moment is 9%, but it goes up and down. So it's impossible to fool customers. So after seven years, we are still growing. It is because the product works and we get repurchase. Big market, Sweden 1 billion, uh, Swedish krona, Germany 10 billion, Japan 10 billion, China 37 billion, US 50 billion. Uh, we now have a foothold in uh, Germany and we have an agreement in Japan. This is what it looks like in different countries. Cold guard it's called in South Africa, Korta Grip in, in Spain. Viru Protect in the German-speaking uh, uh, countries. And then we have the new taste. I'll show you a very brief uh, television ad from Spain. Tienes 48 horas para intentar evitar el resfriado. Esta temporada, 
llega Cortagrip, que gracias a su fórmula exclusiva, crea una barrera que atrapa los virus eliminándolos de forma natural y así evita que avance el resfriado. Cortagrip, el resfriado tiene las horas contadas. The first 48 hours are the most important. If you treat too late, it's too late. You have to attack the virus while it's replicating and growing in numbers. Our strategy is to grow on our home markets, Sweden and Denmark, uh, where we go directly and then do everything through partners. So we don't have any costs outside of Scandinavia and the studies we do, of course. Uh, and we do this with the help of clinical data uh, that support the claims and an active patent strategy that makes the uh, distributors uh, feel comfortable. We have a lot of publications. Uh, Last year's study showed highly significant improvement of quality of life. That's one reason we did a second study to uh, confirm that. Uh, but we didn't reach uh, that high um, significance, or we didn't reach significance in that study. Uh, and then we could show a significantly lower consumption of drugs to relieve the symptoms, no sprays, uh, fever, uh, uh, alleviating drugs, and, and the cough syrup, etc. And this is how quick they become healthy. So the red bars are without cold sign, and the blue bars are with cold sign. And then you can see that fewer and fewer have a common cold uh, after a couple of days if they use cold sign. <laughs> and this is what it looks like uh, in Swedish, Swedish pharmacy chains. Uh, upper row, cold sign, a lot of packages, and then come uh, symptom relieving drugs. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, so I will just ask some questions. So looking at, uh, could you give us some more information what this new extended agreement with, with Stada means in terms of uh, their marketing capabilities and perhaps compare that with the old um, sort of uh, the Vera Protect uh, uh, solution you had before and, and what that means in terms of marketing and what they can do uh, on the market there. Uh, Stada is the number one pharmaceutical company in Germany, uh, which means that they have a lot of salespeople uh, and they cover all pharmacies in Germany. So we have access to that now, uh, as we had before with the other product. Um, they are also the market leader in all kind of common cold products. So they own the segment. They have the, the most selling symptom relieving uh, product. It's called uh, something that I have forgotten now. And now they wanted to add uh, our technology to comp have a complete portfolio to offer the, uh, their customers. So are they more limited in terms of what they can say and what they can do in terms of marketing compared to the Vero Protect uh, uh, solution or is it uh, similar or, or how would you describe it? Because it's a qu different regulation, yeah. uh, isn't it? They can say different things. If you have a medical device, you can tell that the product has uh, medical advantages. If you have a cosmetic product, uh, you can't say that it has medical advantages. So, for example, with a, a product registered under a cosmetic um, uh, directive, you can't say that it um, shortens a common code. Uh, you have to, uh, and this product is, is sold to alleviate the um, uh, uncomfortable feelings in the throat and, and uh, moisturize the mouth and the throat. So it's a, it's a totally different product, but it's built on the same technology, so it contains the cod enzyme trips in and it contains glycerol. So, so it's very important to underline that it is a different product because it's registered under a different directive. So it should perhaps not be seen as a complete reopening, but rather a new agreement in that sense. Uh, of the it's of the absolutely a new launch mm. and a new agreement because it's a different product. Mm. Cool. So looking at the Japanese opportunity, if we could look at that quickly, I know there's uh, there's no real news in that sense, but perhaps you could give us a bit of an update on that opportunity because the last communicated date was uh, late 2020 or end of 2020. Does that still hold and what can we expect there? We don't know, uh, to be honest. Um, we hope for that, but it's a regulatory process. 
uh, and they have to uh, understand if this is a fish or a bird, if this is a medical device, class one, class two, class three, if it's a pharmaceutical uh, or if it fits as a oral cosmetic. So it, it takes quite a lot of time when you go into new markets. Um, and it's the same with uh, US, it's the same with uh, India, China. Uh, everything outside of Europe is unknown until we have the first approval. Mm. So it's a quite big player, but could you give us any information in terms of the coverage that you could get? I know in Germany you had 90% coverage uh, uh, with Stada, but uh, can you give us any information? Is it 10% of the pharmacies, 5%, 20 or s Can you give it us a range? It's one of the absolutely biggest Japanese life science companies. Mm. And they are planning for a stage launch. So you start with the big city pharmacies and then you roll it out in, in the regions and then finally in the countryside. Mm, interesting. So, so looking at uh, South Africa and Hong Kong and Macau as well, could you give us just a, a bit of a deep dive on those markets? How are things progressing there? How has the product been received? And have there been any issues at all? Uh, South Africa is launched. Mm -hmm. The size is like Sweden, and uh, the launch goes according to plan. Hong Kong, uh, we have shipped product to Hong Kong, but they haven't uh, uh, launched it. They are waiting for final approval. But we hope that there will be a launch this uh, winter season or this cold season. Mm. Uh, Maybe before Christmas even, even if, even if it's only a few weeks left. Interesting. So looking at the Morin agreement as well, as you mentioned, the 120 million uh, three-year order, have you received any updates there and, and have there been any feedback from the clients? So have you started shipping? Could you give us some, some additional info there? We have shipped the uh, first order. So it's, it started uh, three years, started in May, I think, or June. So we have a commitment from them with orders during the first 12 months and then another commitment for the next 12 months and then for the next 12 months. But I've been in this business for so long, long time. So normally you get the, the biggest part of the order at the end of these periods because uh, launching takes time. Interesting. And just a final note, uh, in this last quarterly report, uh, you mentioned that there, sh there will likely be a liquidity shortfall in the coming 12 months, and you're looking at the bridge financing solution there. How should, how should we think about that? Because you mentioned that you won't be probably won't be looking at a, a rights issue or, or, the, or a similar solution. Could you... How we are not looking for that now. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and as I showed you, there is a dip during summer, hmm. uh, which strains uh, the cash. So to cover up for that, to not be in a bad situation, we have communicated that we probably uh, might um, uh, take a bridge loan. Uh, and as it looks now, yes, we will do. But of course, the new deal with Germany uh, improves the cash, the liquidity situation. And uh, neither we nor uh, Stada knows when the follow-up orders will come. Perfect. So thank you very much, and thank you all for listening. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.